Jesse Rich Ministries, called by God to take the word of faith to New York City, America, and all the world. Today, God's people desperately need to be taught who they are in Christ Jesus, how to be led by the Holy Spirit, and walk in the God kind of love so they can live in victory in every area of their life. Stay tuned to today's dynamic message as Brother Rich ministers the word of faith. Hey, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Jesse Rich. So glad you tuned in today. Let's turn our Bibles over to Ephesians chapter 6. Now, we've been reading scriptures from the Word of God about developing our spirit man and become strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Each one of us as believers, once we receive Jesus, Lord and Savior, we want to build our spirit man up so he's strong. So to a place that you're able to resist the devil. Now, an indication that your spirit man's weak and is not developed like he should be is that you worry all the time. You get over in stress, anxiety, or strife, or you're sowing discord among brothers and saying things out your mouth you should never be saying. When you find yourself in those kind of conditions, you realize that you've allowed yourself to become spiritually weak. And what you want to do is put time, go back, get, get in the Word of God, and it's going to take you some time to get back on course. You know, it's no fun. It's just like in a natural, if you get out of shape physically, well, it's no fun to have to go back to exercise and, you know, and start eating the salads and the fruits if you've been used to eating something else. Well, spiritually speaking, more important, thank God for bodily exercise. It profits little. And thank God for eating, whatever. But the point is, you want to make sure you're feeding on the Word of God. For instance, you know, if you had a trainer and they're going to help you get in shape physically where you got a six-pack stomach. Well, now, they're going to be real strict about what you eat and the time you put in exercise every day. And they're going to help try to balance it out. You know, if you're doing, uh, you're working out with barbells, you're doing all this bench pressing and everything else, they're going, to, they're going to let you want to load up on some proteins at the same time you don't want you to overload. So they're always going to kind of be working with the system here. Well, spiritually speaking, to grow and develop spiritually, to become strong, and you want to become strong. Now, you may think, you know, well, I know as much about, it's about the Bible as I want to know. We're not talking about just getting Bible knowledge. We're talking about getting into the Word till we get the Word in us. And if we don't get the Word in us, see, the less amount of Word you got in you, the more Satan can do against you. The more words you know, the more words you're doing, the less Satan will be able to, to do anything to you. So you want to keep strong. You know, I got born again because I didn't want to go to hell. And I heard a preacher preach that if you're not saved, you're going to go to hell. Read Scripture and gave an altar call for people to receive Jesus, Lord, and Savior. Now, I want to stay in the Word day and night and keep myself built up because I don't want Satan doing anything to me. And see, what happens to people, they don't realize the importance of it. So when something happens to some pastor that was well-known or some minister, they'll think, well, now, we all prayed that God would heal him or her, and they didn't get healed. Now, you know, I just kind of wonder because if we were all praying and it was God's will to heal him, he'd have healed him. Well, usually people get in these difficulties because they, they either sinned or they got weak spiritually and or both. So what we want to do is not sin as believers, and we also want to make sure we stay strong spiritually. That's going to take time to work. There's no shortcuts of this. It's every day in the Word. Yeah, you're going to love me, huh? Every day in God's Word, every day in prayer, every day in worshiping God, every day in praying the Spirit, every day of doing all you can to walk in a God kind of love, doing all you can to walk by faith and not by sight, doing all you can to obey God, first of all, from His Word. You want to make sure that you're doing the Word first. And secondly, by that inward witness of the Holy Spirit, that you're obeying the promptings of the Holy Spirit. We want to put the Word first place in our life. So the Lord said here in Ephesians chapter 6, now verse 10, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Now he's going to tell us why we need to do this and the how-to. Remember when God told Joshua to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might? When he said to him, Be thou very courageous, be thou strong. It's saying the same thing that God's saying here in Ephesians. But he told Joshua how to do it. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, told him 7, to be strong. Verse 9, to be courageous and strong. Verse 8, he tells him how to do it. This book of law, we call it the Bible, this book of law, the Word of God, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, 
that thou mayest observe the Gordon all that's written there, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Now think about this. Do this day and night. That's a lot of work. Well, you see now, spiritually speaking, we got to do a lot of work. we got to work on getting ourselves built up and then maintain it every day of the rest of our life. And many Christians don't know this. Many ministers don't know that. I mean, they have a Bible knowledge. Preachers, many ministers or preachers have a Bible knowledge of God's Word. Know the Word of God. They can tell you what stories are in 1 Kings and what stories are in 2 Samuel. They know the difference. But they haven't been exercising spiritually enough to keep themselves spiritually strong. And they don't know they need to do this. There's spiritual exercise you can do. One of them is meditating on the Word day and night. Another one is pray in the Spirit every day. Another one is worship God every day. Quote Scripture. Read the Word of God. Claim God's promises. See, it's not enough just to praise God. You need to praise God every day. But you also need to be reading the Word every day. It's not enough just to read the Bible every day. You also need to be praying in the Spirit every day and singing in the Spirit. These are things that God gave us. These are spiritual exercises that we can do to get our spirit man strong. The more you do this, the more aware you're going to be of your spirit man. And the more sensitive you're going to be to the leadings of God and the Holy Spirit. All of us want to be led by the Spirit. Because Romans chapter 8, verse 14 through 16 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption whereby I cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness our spirit that we are the children of God or the sons of God. Now, how does, how does the Holy Spirit do this? He bears witness our spirit that we're the children of God. Well, He'll bear witness our, our spirit about other things. You'll know in your spirit. I mean, you're been shopping and you got these items and you take them to the counter and while you're standing there in line, you're thinking, take this stuff back. Come, you know, it comes to your heart. Take this back. Now, your mind thinks, don't do that. We need these. Or you maybe you went someplace and you were just looking. You were walking to a store or someplace and they said, can I help you? So I'm just looking. And a salesman or you yourself find some kind of item and you, you pick it up and looking at it. I mean, it may be an object, you know, that you can handle or maybe something big as a car. And it comes to your heart, I want you to get this. Now, your, your mind's thinking, I wish we hadn't went shopping now. Because now you realize this is something in your spirit that God wants you to get for you or for someone else. And your mind's thinking, I don't want any more responsibilities. We've already got enough stuff we're believing God on. Well, you see now, there's one incident that your mind's all for it and your flesh is all for it, but your spirit man's saying no. Other instance, your spirit man's saying this is what God wants us to get, and your mind and flesh doesn't want to do it because they know it's a big responsibility. Well, these things will come to you, you know, and you'll think in your heart, you know, this is, I had this one time, the vehicle I had had a problem one summer with air conditioning. Now, I was going to be gone a lot that summer traveling, preaching, so I thought, well, I really don't care because, uh, you know, I, I won't be using that vehicle. So I'd take it out of the dealership, and they put some free on, or the garage worked on, put some free on in, in it. Said, uh, well, preacher, maybe that'll hold you over. And if it does, then great. Well, it, it held over for about a week instead of the whole summer. That's what he meant. He's hoping. It. If it doesn't, then you've got this problem. You need a compressor and all this. So, okay, that's going to cost some money. And so that summer went by. Now we're coming into the next one. Didn't need it in the winter. Next, next summer's coming around. And it starts coming to me about that air conditioner. I'd forgot all about it. But even before I got back to that vehicle, I'd been gone for a few months. It's coming to me. I want you to get that replaced. It's coming to my heart. Well, you know, you were, <laughs> it's going to cost some money to get this done. So I go back with a guy that worked on it a year ago. Talked to him. I said, yeah, I think it's... It's that compressor, everything you said it well. The Freon didn't last any time, so um, when can you do this? Well, he says, uh, let me get the parts ordered, and then you just bring it in. You want to order the parts? He says, yeah, go ahead. 
Well, then the mechanic comes over and starts talking to me after the owner and said, well, you know, and starts talking about the vehicle I got and how many miles I got. You really waste your money doing it. And all the time he's talking, I know in my spirit, and the what it, no matter what this thing is going to cost, I got to do it. I mean, it'd been cheaper to buy a jet airplane. I know in my spirit, I got to do this. Well, now you see, this isn't, one, this isn't something my head wanted to do. He didn't want to do it last year. But it kept coming to my heart. And it ended up having it done. Now, you'll learn to go by what you got in your spirit. You may think you desperately need something. You've got to get it now. But inside your spirit, man, you're knowing, don't do this. It's not time. Or you may not get that much. You just know in your heart you're not to do it. And you're thinking, i got to do it. i got to get it now. But see, now you're spirit-led. You're led by your spirit. You're not led by your emotions, are you? You're not led by your flesh or your mind. Thank God for your mind. Thank God for your emotions. No, you're led by the inward witness, and you don't have the witness on this. Now, where people miss it, they say, well, well, well now we prayed about it. Before we bought that car, we prayed about it. Well, what, what did you get in your heart? Well, I mean, I, I can't say God told us to do it. But we did pray about it, didn't we? Didn't we, honey, you know? <laughs> Honey's going, well, now, what would you get in your spirit? Did you get, yes, go ahead and get this? Well, we didn't get anything. I mean, we didn't hear. I mean, we didn't, you know, then that's no reason to get it. You need to learn, develop patience, and wait on God. All of us got to work on this. Think if Daniel had gave up on the 20th day before the angel got through and told him the message from God. Because he could have just went by his sight and thought, hey, if God was going to get through, he got through by now. I've been praying and fasting, and no, but he didn't give up. He didn't know how long it's going to take. But... He stayed with it, and he got his answer. Now, you see, you want to stay with what God leads you to do. From his word, number one, always put the word first place. Whatever the word says, go by it. That, you don't pray about that. You just do it. Secondly is, what does the Spirit of God put in your heart? See, just don't give up. Go over here to, to uh, jump over to Malachi, right before Matthew. This is one of the first things I started doing when I got born again that I could be a doer of the Word of God in, in Malachi chapter 3. Now the scripture says here in verse 10, Bring, all, bring you all the tithes to the storehouse when we meet in my house, and prove me now here with say, Lord of hosts, if I will not open you, the windows that pour you out of blessing, you shall not be room enough to receive it. Now who's supposed to do this? We do this individually. Bring our tithes to our storehouse, where we're getting fed on God's Word. Now it goes on and says here, And I rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast fruit for the time filled, say, Lord of hosts. And all nations call you blessed, for you shall bless the land, say, Lord of hosts. Now jump over here, please, with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, Deuteronomy 28 is the blessings that belong to Abraham. Moses recorded them, but was old covenant blessings. Now, what this has got to do with you and I is because once we get born again, whether we were Jew or Gentile, once we become born again, we're an heir of Abraham's blessings, according to Galatians 3, 13, 14, and verse 29. Remember, Christ has redeemed us from the curse law, being made a curse for us, written curse, several one that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Well, most of us were Gentiles before we got born again. Verse 29 says, And if ye be Christ, if you belong to him, in other words, then are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now here, here's these blessings that belong to us in verse, well, actually verse 3 through verse 14. But verse 1 and 2 says this, And it shall come to pass, if, I circled that word if, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all his commands, and I command this day, the Lord thy God will set thee high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee, if thou wilt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Then he goes on and says, Blessed shall be in the city, blessed shall be in the field. He goes on and lists the blessings. Now, how's these blessings going to overtake us? We've got to hearken diligently into God's voice and His Word. So put the Word first. Whatever the Word says, do it. So start out by tithing. Because you want to show God that there's no other gods before you. That money, money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. And in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Verse 10 through 12. So it shows us that the love of money, 
will cause people to, the greed of money will cause people to pierce themselves through as many sorrows. But what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to trust the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to understand him. In all thy ways acknowledge him, he shall direct thy path. Remember the Holy Spirit said, Charge them the rich in this world, that be not high minor, nor trust the uncertain riches, but in living God who give us richly all things to enjoy. So what has God given us? His word, the name of Jesus, and everything that he's purchased for us. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, according to the word of God, God has already purchased these things for us. For us. In, in 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. And 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health, even as a soul prosper. But you got to, each one of us, have got to do the word. we got to tithe. It was before the law, during the law, and after the law. And you don't want to put it off because you're going to rob yourself of a blessing that belongs to you when you don't tithe. Just put God first. Now, that angers people because they're always, they're so caught up thinking about themselves. What are they going to eat? What are they going to wear? How are they going to pay their cable? How are they going to do this? No, you're thinking wrong. Think about, I'm going to put God first and all those things are his responsibility. He said this is what he would do. And you got to prove this out for yourself. It's one thing the preacher gets up and get right past the offering container and says, now we're going to receive the tithes and the offerings and Read this scripture. We're going to stand upon this. That's great. Good. But when you do this, you've got to keep taking God's word and applying it to your life every day. I did this morning. I just kept saying, just coming to the, the station here, do the program. I'm a tither, and it's written. And I'd quote Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. And I'd say, I'm by myself. I'd say, I'm a giver. It's written. Give, it should be given to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it shall men give me my bosom. My seed grows, and as I sow my seed, it grows. And you want to believe God that your seed is growing, producing the benefit to you. You're going to need money and blessings in the future, more than you are right now. Many things in this world is going to change in your nation. Comforts that you were so accustomed to, that you became used to. Dependent on, you know, all of us live a very comfortable life. You know, even people that don't have a home, many of them, not all, but many of them get to live in a shelter a few hours a night. Where many people around the world that are, don't have a home, we're going to sleep on the streets at night. I've seen thousands, probably tens of thousands of people that slept out on the streets in other nations of the world. Of course, you have that here too in America but not on the, you know, not, not as many. But the point is, things will get worse. So you want to build your spirit man up on God's word. You want to make sure that you're looking to God to meet your need. You're going to desperately need Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. You're going to be glad that you did this someday. I mean, you'll be hugging the preacher. No wonder how beautiful the feet of that to preach the gospel and bring glad tidings of peace. Because you're, you're just thrilled that you got a hold of it. And you want to start doing this now. Trials are going to come like you've never seen before. And you'll pass all of them if you'll build your life on God's Word by being a doer of the Word of God. Remember over here, you're right close by in Matthew 7. Oh, my Bible just went right to it. But here in Matthew chapter 7, now verse 24. Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will like him or compare him to wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rains, it said, and the floods came, the winds blew, and it beat upon the house, and it fell not because God loved this person. He took care of him. Well, he does love this person, and he will take care of you. But that's not what the, Jesus said. He said because his house is built upon a rock. Now, this little passage here helped me immensely was why some people get their blessing and others don't. Some get healed and don't. You know, it looks like God loves some more than others. No. He loves everybody the same. But it goes on and says here, Jesus says here in this, in this verse 26, And everyone that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not should be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain said, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and it beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Well, now this man didn't take the time to build a foundation. He's not going down there to, you know, the bedrock there to build his his house on, so the storm came, and it blew him away. And great was the fall of it. The other man, he took the time to get in the Word. You want to get in the Word. 
because trials are going to come. They came to test the storms came to both of these guys. One lasted through them. The other one did. So this is, see, this helps explain why some people get the blessing from God and others don't. It's one did what God said to do, and the other one heard what God said to do and didn't do it. No, you got to stay with it. You start tithing. This is the first place you start obeying God. And you stay with it the rest of your life. You don't even think about not doing it. Those thoughts come to you, you know right away they're from Satan. So you cast down those thoughts. And you stay right on top of this and you stay with it in Jesus' name. You're going to need this. The whole nation is going to need this. I don't know if we'll get the nation doing it. I'm talking about the United States of America. So you'll want to do this because you're going to want God to be your source. Many things in this nation are going to change. You're not going to like the change. So what you want to do is stay with the word. Build yourself up. You're going to be glad that you did this. Guarantee it if you stay with God's word. Put time in the Word. Walk around the house. Tithe and just keep saying to yourself over and again, I'm a tither. It's written, bring you all the tithes to the storehouse and meet in my house and prove me now here with say, Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, you'll still not be rude and receive it. And I rebuke the devourer for your Satan. He's trying to throw the fruits of your ground. Neither should be vine, cast fruit for the time, fields say, Lord of hosts. And all nations call you blessed. For each blast and blast, say, Lord of hosts. Memorize these verses. Quote them. It's 10% of your income. What can you do with that 10% to get this? This is the great benefit. This is the greatest insurance policy you'll ever get is tithing to God. You're going to wish you started this a long time ago and stayed with it. Now, some people start it, but as soon as something comes up, they quit. No, make yourself. Be determined. Like one lady said one time to her husband, I'd rather live on the street. And she didn't know anything about confession. Well, she knew a little, but not that much. She said, I'd rather live on the street and have my tithe paid than, be, than not be tithed and live in the place I'm living in. Now, what was she trying to say? Well, she's trying to tell that ding-dong she's married to, we got to stay with this. And she painted a picture for him. So a lot of things are going to change. They've already started. And many people are going to lose their comforts they have that they got used to. Our nation is a real soft nation anyway. I mean, almost everybody's got a cell phone. Almost everybody goes on the Internet, you know. Come on. And it's going to get some people's attention because the devil comes in when people don't do what God said to do. We give Satan place. Disobedience, you know. You may never stole anybody, anything from a restaurant or hotel or a neighbor. But, you know, when you, don't, when you don't tithe, you're robbing God. You're stealing. So this is serious stuff. So you want to give God a dime out of every dollar, a dollar out of every ten, a ten out of every hundred, a hundred out of every thousand, and just keep doing it. Obey God. You make ten thousand dollars, give God a thousand. Show him these first. And in doing so, then you don't have an idol before you. Because we're not to have any other idols before us. We're not to worship anything else. And some people worship their money. They hold on to it, you know, hang on to it, because they just have a little bit anyway. It's not enough to go around. It's not enough to meet all needs. Of course, I can't tithe. No, you got this concept wrong. It's tithe first. Then whatever's left over, you work on your bills with it. Well, it's not going to be enough. Well, not talking that way. Of course not. Put some expectation in it. Do it with joy. Do it because you love the Lord. I've had the Lord deal with me about things. Just, son, just do it because you love me. Well, I mean, when he puts it like that or when he says, well, you do it because you love me, it's done, <laughs> you know. There's no more thinking about it. I mean, I've had many plans. I thought maybe the Lord wants me heading this direction. So I, you know, I'm all ready to go in that direction, packed up, ready to go, got the plane ticket, the whole thing. Comes to my heart, don't do it. Oh, great, you know, well. But I knew in my spirit the Lord doesn't want me to do this. Now, he's told us that each one of us need to tithe. And, you know, you can hear preachers preach about this all your life and not do it. Well, you want, your house, you want your house to stand? Then do it, and then keep your mouth working day and night. Don't let the word, don't let Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12, depart from your mouth. Keep it in the heart. Take God's word and meditate on it. Remember what God told Joshua, this book of the law. Joshua, if you're going to be successful, if you're going to prosper, if you're going to be courageous, if you're going to be strong, this is how to do it. This book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth, 
But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe according to all that is written there. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So tithe, and this take Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12, and quote it to yourself during the day and at night if you wake up. Just keep doing it. I'll say it this way. I'm a tither, and it's written. Bring all the tithes to the storehouse. There may meet in my house and prove me now. Here we say, Lord of hosts. If I will not open you, the windows that pour you out of blessing, you shall not be removed unto receive it. And I rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall sow the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast fruit before the time fields, say, Lord of hosts. And all nations call you blessed, for you shall plant some land, say, Lord of hosts. By doing that, it's going to help calm you down. Just keep doing it over and over and over again. Just keep rejoicing and thanking God that your needs are met. Do it by faith in Jesus' name. But tithe. Give God your first 10%. So that ministry will still be able to send you out the word. See, they, they, if, they, if, they, if that storehouse is getting adequately fed, then that storehouse is able to keep on feeding you and feeding others on the Word of God. But people bless their hearts. They get concerned about their needs. They get caught up in that, and they get to looking at it and think, well, you know, I don't have enough here to pay my own bills. No. You've got God's Word to go by, and you want to do that. And you say, God, I've got your Word here. You said here. This is what you said. And I'm going to do what you said to do from your word. And I'm going to stay with it. And Satan and no demon of hell is going to keep me from doing it. And I'm not going to quit. Many people started, but they quit. Life got hard. Something came up. And always be something in the natural that will give you an excuse to quit. But that's no reason to quit. You want to keep on staying on God's promises. So take Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. Make a commitment and stay with it. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. You're going to be glad that you did this. This nation needs help. It's going to need desperate help in the future. It's going to need a miracle from God. Enjoy being with you. I want to encourage you. Keep tithing and remember Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for joining the broadcast of Word of Faith, the outreach ministry and teachings of Jesse Rich. If you'd like for Brother Rich to agree with you in prayer or to receive a copy of today's program or additional teaching materials, contact Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 237170, New York, New York, 10023. Visit our website at www.jesserichministries.com.